itself. And as per the need of the hour, we learned the online platforms as Zoom, Teams, and the other teaching tools. Also, it is very well said that continuous learning is the minimum requirement for success in any field. Continuous learning and upgrading of our skills was the basis of organizing this conference. And I'm sure the delegates from different pharmacy institutes across the India, they have also joined to fulfill the same purpose. In these four days of conference, we have listened to the experts from academia and industry and learned many tips and tricks to overcome challenges which are offered by this ever-changing pharmacy education system. We had total 13 lectures of eminent speakers who have motivated and mentored us all with their expertise and experience. And we today have reached the conclusion of the conference. So I request Dr. Dayanal Kannu, sir, Vice Principal Indira College of Pharmacy to give the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Pallavi, ma'am. Uh, a very good afternoon to one and all. Today I am here to welcome you all on behalf of our principal, Dr. Anantha Doshi, madam, management, and all the team ICP. Uh, so at the outset, I would like to welcome you all for the validity function of this online national conference, Good Pharmacy Educational Practices. We are deeply honored to have Dr. Mahesh Gurande, sir, as the chief guest for today's function. Hearty welcome, sir. I wish to extend our welcome to all the senior faculty members, like Dr. L.D. Patel, sir, who has been attending all the sessions right from the beginning, Dr. Ramesh Kate Deshmukh, sir, all other dignitaries, faculty members, and participants who have joined this function, wishing you all a hearty welcome. This conference has surely been a great success with enormous support from all the participants. The focus of the conference being pharmacy education and the pharmacy teacher. I am sure that you all will agree that the overall teaching profession has metamorphosized, and now a teacher has to hone multiple roles. Apart from teaching, the age-old chalk and board pedagogy has been again and again redesigned into a high-fi uh, high technology-mediated learning teaching process. Though for every compassionate teacher, teaching is a beautiful thing, highly satisfying, we all know that nowadays teachers are getting busier in allied tasks. In true sense, the focus on the teaching has surely affected. Most of the sessions we have had a very detailed discussion about this. Even during just now the presentation of Dr. Dushi sir also, this was quite discussed, right? So multitasking is the new norm. It may be documentation, ERP, outcome-based education, branding activities, college activities, mentoring, research, publishing papers, updating profiles, semester pattern exams, NAC, NRF, the list is big, right? So even sometimes the teachers have to go for election duties. That is also one thing additional we are doing, right? Yes, we do so many things. It is unending. For sure, all these reasons and many more. Just to sum up, I would like to state that a teacher is not a simple human. He or she is a superhuman having tremendous capabilities. This conference was organized with an aim of assisting fellow brethren to create a perfect balance between all these tasks. We need to be extremely professional in our approach and should strive hard to focus mainly on the teaching, learning, relearning, creating, designing, and delivering. Only one caution, no doubt, teaching is a noble profession, but let's not make it so submissive that it becomes no bala profession. We cannot make it such a weak profession, right? We, there is no doubt that the teachers are playing a pivotal role in creating future professionals and responsible citizens of this nation. Yes, it's an incredible task and a tremendous feat achieved. Each one of us will surely vouch that a student's achievement and his rise in the career gives us immense satisfaction. Being a teacher is the highest privilege. So together, let's put in our best and make the most of it. Without taking much of your time, I once again welcome a hearty welcome. I convey a hearty welcome to all of you. Thank you all. Thanks a lot.
Thank you, sir, for the kind words. Moving ahead, we got more than 900 registrations for the conference, and it was carried out on Zoom platform as well as broadcasted live on YouTube. So I request Mrs. Rutuja Kamre, ma'am, to give an overview of this four days conference. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. I get privileged to be here to be summing up the conference of the SCCS and Jara College of Pharmacy about the good pharmacy educational practices. Teaching is more than imparting knowledge. It is inspiring generation. Learning is more than absorbing facts. It is acquiring understanding. Keeping this in mind, we at Indira College of Pharmacy coined the topic of AICT-sponsored online national conference on national pharmacy education practices organized by SCCS Indira College of Pharmacy Pune from 21st March to 24th March 2022. The program was successfully unveiled by the kind and auspicious presence of Dr. Pramod Yavle, sir, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, Marathwara University, Aurangabad, Vice President and Acting President, Pharmacy Council of India. We were delighted to have Dr. Rajendra Kakade, sir, Advisor, AICT, New Delhi, Professor and Coordinator of Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences at Rashtrasa Tukroji Maharaj Nagpur University, Nagpur, as a guest of honor. On the inaugural uh, function, we had a deep discussion on the contribution of the teacher in pharmacy education and how the goal of quality education can be reached. The first session began with the discussion on the role of academician in creating the responsible pharmacist. This was delivered by Dr. Atmaram Pavar sir, principal, Pune College of Pharmacy, Pune. His topic was the role of academician in creating the responsible pharmacist. He focused on the objective of the education of the current era and how teachers should make the students to think and not to lead with the definitions and the principle of the topic. He also emphasized on creating the case studies during the practicals so that the students were forced to think for the reason with the particular preferences it was a accumulation of the learning session. The next session, Dr. Abhijit Gotuskar, sir, the pharma consultant Pune, was our next eminent speaker for the session two, who shared his insight on the topic, making students industry ready. It was really a brainstorming session as his talk included about the teaching principles post pandemic, he also covered a lot of ground explaining the different principles of the modern learning centered on the current state of the Indian pharmaceutical industry, its market sector, its size, sector composition, and the cretins. He advised the teachers on what industry wants from the graduates and how to bridge the gap. He emphasized the significance of Bloom's taxonomy and cone of experience and how to make the students industry ready. The second day began with a distinguished speaker, Dr. N.K. Jain, ex-professor, Dr. H.S. Gau University, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. As he offered his thought on role of efficacy, belief in pharmaceutical teaching, it was an educational and inspiring event. He expressed his view on ethics, self-efficacy, and self-belief. Additionally, he explained how the self-efficacy is linked to the academic achievement and ability to overcome the phobias. The second session begin with the day two, the presentation of Dr. M.S. Nagar Senkar Ma'am from the Bombay College of Pharmacy, Mumbai. Her topic was combining teaching and research in pharmacy education. She guided the teacher delegates about how to make a perfect blend in between teaching and research and how to apply for the research grant. Her presentation also included the information about the educational journals in the pharmaceutical sciences, which I'm sure that we that was very a new aspect for the teacher like us. It was a gaze experience for all of us. The third session began with the talk of Dr. Anagha Zoshi, principal SCCS Indira College of Pharmacy, Pune. It was a really an engaging education, stimulating session. Her talk focused on working together as a team, growing together with a growth mindset. 
The fourth session begin with the talk of Dr. Parizat El Tidana, Principal Technical Consultant Pharma at ACGM World Mumbai. She explained about her expertise, expectations from the industry, from, uh, from the academia. She also shared her experience at, uh, at the academic collaboration with the industry and deeply discussed and explained the possible ways to overcome the, uh, the gap. The third day began with the talk of Dr. Mohammed Salaudi, Principal, Al Amin College of Pharmacy, Bangalore. He delivered on the topic NEP and pharmacy education. The session was on the national education policy and was incredibly helpful. His presentation was centered on NEP and the role of the NEP in the pharmacy education and what we have to think about the future pharmacy education would be like. Session two began with the talk of Dr. Indu Paul Kaur, Professor, Head Department, Pharmaceutical Sciences, University of Punjab, Chandigarh. She delivered the topic uh, on the role of academician in the transitional research. Delegates were really captivated by her session. Her talk focused on how to adopt modern approaches in collaborative research and venture creation. Dr. G.P. Mohanta, Professor of uh, Professor, Department of Pharmacy Practice, Annamala University, Tamil Nadu, was our next speaker for session three. He delivered his insight on pharmacy practice, education, challenges, strategies for the better future in the pharmacy. It was really an alarming and eye-opening session for all the pharmacy practitioners. Also, his talk has a glimpse of the reality and the challenges faced by the students in India following the pharmacy practice. Session four was started with the talk of Dr. Srinivas Mutalik, Professor and Head of the Department, Pharmaceutics, Manipal College of Pharmacy, Manipal. His talk focused on innovation through industry collaboration. He highlighted the aspects of how academia and industry collaboration is going to develop an innovation in the current years. Moving on to day four, we were pleased and delighted to have Dr. Sunila Dhaneshwar, Director, Amity University Pharmacy, Uttar Pradesh, Lucknow, as our next speaker for session one. Her topic was predatory journals, a growing threat to the research industry. It was an eye-opening session regarding the current aspects of the research integrity and uh, the predatory journals. The second session began with the talk of Dr. Prasun Gupta, Principal Scientist, CSIR, Indian Institute Integrity Medicine, Jammu. His topic was designing and writing an effective research grant proposal. He focused on the current aspects and shared his valuable expertise on getting the research proposals. The third session began with the discussion of uh, discussion with Dr. Zoshi, Principal, Sada Vilas College of Pharmacy, Mysore. He expressed his thoughts on ethics in pharma education. With this conference, I'm sure all the delegates must have felt like having a deep dive into the knowledge of the current aspects of the pharmacy education practices. So thank you. This was just a glimpse of whatever the conferences, the, whatever the topics that were covered in the conferences. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. You have taken us to the journey of four days we experienced. We are extremely honored by the presence of Dr. Burande, sir, as chief guest in today's function. With a rich experience in pharma field, Dr. Burande, sir, is known to the pharma fraternity as a trainer in GMP, quality, validation, pharma marketing skills, and attitude development. He is very well appreciated orator, and I'm sure many of us must have witnessed his wonderful conduct of sessions at different occasions. So I feel honored and privileged to felicitate Dr. Burande sir on behalf of Dr. Anaga Zoshi ma'am, Dr. Kannu sir and our entire team ICP. There is always space for improvement. No matter how long you have been in any field, 
or doing any work. And for the same, the feedback is equally important. So I request the delegates to share their experience of these four days. Those who wish to share their experience, they can unmute themselves or they can put their experience back in the chat box. May I request Dr. L.D. Patel, sir, to share his views? Please, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. I send my feedback uh, PPT to Kanur, sir. Yes, sir, I've got it. Yes. And it is a repetition what uh, Dr. Rujuta had said. Uh, I summarize everything in all that six slides and uh, overall before that uh, respected uh, all-rounder pharmacist uh, Dr. Buranesh, he is our LMCP student, uh, respected Anagami, all uh, faculty members and participants. Totally, there were 13 sessions and all well, were well planned with uh, excellent uh, theme of each topic. And uh, most important thing that the speakers were well identified, well experienced and knowledgeable. They presented the things very well. And uh, during these four days, uh, I was absent on one of the session of Dr. Uh, Anagame on that day, I had uh, one PhD viva, uh, online PhD viva of one of the university. So I, I couldn't attend that two to three hour session, two to three uh, PM session on that uh, second day. Almost all were very good. Feedback is good. And uh, personally, I got too much new knowledge like uh, that uh, AP Power style. He presented his topic in his style. Even Anagame, I seen that uh, YouTube downloaded the YouTube from your YouTube uh, channel and seen that she presented the things well. Even today, so, uh, Sunila has also uh, narrated very well. Even Dr. Josi has narrated very well. So topics were good, presented were also good, and we got the knowledge. I hope that all participants may have same experience. We are very much thankful to the principal sir, vice principal sir, management, to the chief guest, uh, Evelay sir, guest of honor, Kokade sir, even uh, today's guest, Dr. Mayesh Burande, and all participants, and I congratulate personally to all of you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, sir, for your kind yeah, words. Thank you so much. Uh, may I request Dr. Mrunalini Damle, ma'am, to please share her valuable feedback? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, so good afternoon, uh, Gurande sir, all the dignitaries and my fellow delegates. It was really a pleasure attending this four days conference. Um, luckily for me, it coincided the university exam dates of my students, the class that I teach. So then uh, being free from the teaching uh, workload, as we call it, uh, those four days were really apt to attend this conference without any much disturbance from the regular work that we do. It was a wonderful experience, I must say. The first day, the inauguration uh, at the hands of uh, Yevle sir, in presence of Kakre sir, we could hear uh, the dynamic leadership at uh, Indira Group of Institutes in the form of the Rita Madam. It was really nice to see uh, how she leads the whole team of a uh, group of institutes. I see a good leader in Dr. Anaga Joshi, madam. I'm sure under her leadership, uh, Indira College of Pharmacy will surely attain newer heights of performance. I have a nice words of praise for both the coordinators of this uh, conference. Uh, it's Kanur sir and Ingai madam. Uh, 
I think I can clearly see that they have taken efforts to have a nice bouquet of topics covering all the aspects of pharmacy education covered in these four days. And what's more appreciable is that they have been able to contact and get a consent from so many expert speakers, uh, pan India as we call it. We had speakers uh, right from Jammu to Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Kolkata, Punjab, <laughs> and it was like, um, I mean, covering many states of India. They were experts in their own field. Their style of um, presentation was so good. I mean, there are so many things uh, we teachers can take up every day. I mean, everything is there to learn. And nowadays in pandemic, we learn that there is nothing like teaching. The only thing that is true is learning. So though we call ourselves as teachers, I'm sure all of us are learning every day. And these four days uh, was a feast, I must say, in that aspect. Uh, the experienced faculty, uh, as the resource persons here, it was wonderful listening to all of them. The topics were so diverse like at our academic research, getting grants for it, being ethical in your publications, knowing what the industry expects from us, um, and doing all this, maintaining our belongingness to our institute. I think that will get us better fruits of our research in terms of not only the publications, the grants. Our ultimate goal, obviously, is um, getting our students helping them to reach their goals. And I'm sure we will be able to do that with uh, such good guidance coming our way. Um, I could see that Team ICP is doing a wonderful job. Uh, all the new faculty members are working as a team. And that was quite evident from uh, seeing how well they were prepared. They were confident in their presentations and they were um, they had not missed even a single minute point during their presentation. That was wonderful. So I wish all the best to Indira College of Pharmacy, the organizers, principal, management. Thank you from my side. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am, for your inspiring words. It will surely keep our spirits high for the future endeavors. Moving to the next session. With great pleasure, I will take the opportunity to introduce our today's chief guest, Dr. Mahesh Burande, sir. Dr. Mahesh Burande hardly needs an introduction. He is very well known uh, and one of the most distinguished, prolific, and a hardcore pharma professional. Over a span of more than 37 years, he has a rich and varied experience in industry, academics, and consultancy. Yet the occasion demands, and here is his introduction in brief. Dr. Burande started his journey with Letaka Pharmaceuticals, after which he contributed towards the educational sector by serving as an academician in various reputed institutes like Bharti Vidya Peets, Pune College of Pharmacy, Dr. D.Y. Patil College of Pharmacy, and Indira College of Pharmacy. From 2009, he took the leadership role and served as professor and principal in Avon Pharmacy College, Ahmedabad, late Narayan Das Bhavan Das Chabrak Institute of Pharmacy, Satara, and Sadhan College of Pharmacy, Pune. With an aim to educate and develop skillful young pharma professionals, he established Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research a pioneer pharma management institute that conducts comprehensive job-oriented pharmaceutical management diplomas, which are highly recognized and appreciated by industry professionals. Asia Pharma Leaders awarded IPER as India's most promising consulting and training institute at 5th Annual Pharmaceutical Leadership Summit. Very dynamic and multifaceted, that he is, Dr. Burande has also served as a director for Bill Care Research, advisor for Midcon Institute, consulting scientist at Centaur Pharmaceutical Limited, and medical director at New Life Pharmaceutical Private Limited. Presently, he is an adjunct visiting professor, Department of Pharmacy Management, MCOPS Manipal, and Director Skill Development, LBS MBA Healthcare Management, Pune. To promote pharmacy education, he has to his credit extensive association with different regulatory and pharma bodies. Dr. Burande has taken the role of council member, secretary, 
Vice President, Chairman and President at the Indian Pharmaceutical Association, Pune branch and Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers of India. He has also served as Chief Financial Officer at 59th Indian Pharmaceutical Congress at Varanasi, organized by APTI, Chairman Pharmacy Course, MSBTE Mumbai. Dr. Burande got the highest honor in pharmacy profession to become president at 69th Indian Pharmaceutical Congress 2017, Chandigarh, Punjab. To promote stronger pharma academics, academics and industry interaction, he started public testing laboratory and manufacturing unit attached to Pune College of Pharmacy, first of its kind in history of Indian pharmaceutical education to develop the skills in pharmacy students while doing BPharm. He is recipient of Best Young Pharmacy Teacher Award from Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers of India, 1997-98, the Indian Pharmaceutical Association Fellowship Award 2002, Drug Inspector Welfare Association Award, to name a few. He has got Lifetime Achievement Award from Purely Chemist Forum, and he is the recipient of prestigious IAPST Pharmaceutical Professional of the Year 2011 Award by Indian Association of Pharmaceutical Scientists and Technologists. With this impressive and enriched profile, I request Dr. Burande, sir, to please take over. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Pallavi. Now it is a past what I have done. What I can do today and tomorrow is most important. Pharmacy profession has given me everything. Now it's a time to give pharmacy profession whatever actually I got from the pharmacy profession. When I got the call from Dayanand Kannur, that sir, we are requesting you to come for this program for valedictory as a chief guest. And looking to the contribution which I'm doing at present for the skill development, we are running the program at SMBT College of Pharmacy near Simnar. I told him that it would be very difficult to actually address the people, but he said, sir, no, you can manage. You belong to the management field and managing is an art, science and profession. So he inspired me that you should be here and I made the arrangement. Thanks, Dayanan, for inspiring me again to come back on the online platform, although we have started in a big way with the offline programs at present. Uh, congratulations to Indira College of Pharmacy, Dr. Anagha Joshi, and Dr. Dayanan, and all the teaching staff for coming out with a very apt title, I can say, and that title is uh, Good Pharmacy Education Practices. As a pharmacist, since I work with the production, as well as with the quality control, with the clinical research in dental care. I think we are familiar with uh, words like good manufacturing practices, which is under Schedule M. If it comes to the good clinical practices, it comes under Schedule Y. And when it comes under the good pharmacy practices, what we are talking today, especially for the PharmD people in hospital and community pharmacy, it is Schedule N, it is called as. Now coming to the good education practices in the pharmacy, which schedule which we have made, so far, we have not made any schedule. But looking to the three days actually contribution of this program, I think we should come out with a paper and that can be recognized as a schedule actually T in the teaching as far as the pharma is considered. Such a wonderful speakers which are organized and uh, the report says, the feedback says that each and every person has delivered their experience here. And experience is the best MBA, what I can always actually judge from my experience. Uh, but looking back uh, with my experience in the teaching and the industry, I think which are the good educational practices was the question in our mind. So number one is the knowledge. I think all of us have the opportunity and platform to distribute our knowledge, what we learn from the pharmacy as a teacher. Now, when we come to the knowledge, which is the first part, which we can deliver through our pharmacy syllabus. Now, all India basis, actually, the pharmacy syllabus is constant. Earlier, different universities were having the different programs and the different syllabus. And that time, we demanded that the uniform syllabus should be there. Whether the college is in Pune or whether his college is in the interior, uh, everybody should get the same, actually, syllabus so that the development of the competent and complete pharmacists will be uniform. 
And that's why the Pharmacy Council of India fought on that line. And uh, with expert, they came out with this actually. Our role and responsibility to deliver that syllabus, that is the knowledge which we can talk it today. Whether it is the past knowledge, whether it is the current knowledge, but knowledge is the knowledge. Knowledge is the power, knowledge is the strength. And I think the basic foundation of our pharmacy syllabus maybe 45 minutes to one hour, I should perform my job professionally. I should give them the maximum. Today, when actually I look back, that what are the resources available with me when I starting, started my teaching career? I think limited resources will be there. And that's why we have to prepare the notes. No YouTube facility was there. No, actually, uh, the PowerPoint presentations were there. No references available easily. And that's why with your, our experience of industry only, we were talking to the student by preparing our notes. But today, everything is available on the Google. I think the media is playing the important role. So how I can make my actually every lecture effective will actually give the best to the student. Can I do that? Yes, I can do that. If I have the attitude to give the best, I can deliver each and every lecture, which is a 45 minutes lecture given to me by the management or maybe the college, whatever the topic, whatever the subject I choose, I should do the best. And let me tell you, if you start doing that, tomorrow you will be the baiju in the pharmacy profession, maybe after five years. Because the online platform is open. If you are effective, the world is awaiting for your lectures in that case. You'll be rewarded, you'll be recognized, and I think everything you will get in your life. So concentrate, according to me, from the PCI syllabus and deliver your best. That is the knowledge what I'm talking as far as the syllabus is considered. The next part is the updated knowledge. The second part, as far as the good education practices is considered in pharma, is the updated knowledge. How you can give the updated knowledge to the student? Now you have the opportunity for the webinars. Today we are conducting this conference itself through the webinar. And our students should be exposed on that line, those who wanted to become a teacher. So I think organizing the webinar should be a, should be a mandatory part maybe in the future. And the online programs or online syllabus maybe I think 30% to 40% component in the future with new education policy. From US, I can actually take the help of expert people who can deliver the programs for me, for my students. Then organizing the various programs, offline programs, maybe a one-day workshop, two-day workshop, one-day program. Then organizing the guest lectures, bringing them actually in college and, and actually promoting that personality, how they develop their career will be the important aspect on that one. Organizing the conferences will be another part. Taking the part in the pharmacy week, association programs will be another part. So various ways which we can organize today in updating the knowledge as far as the students are considered. And then updating the knowledge is not only actually delivering the lecture. According to me, updating the knowledge, can you send your teachers to the industry during the vacation so that they can develop the skills will be the important aspect in the good education practices. We are not master. Although we have the doctorate in our subject, but whatever is going on in our subject in the industry, many times we are not aware. So can we actually take that actually application, go to the principal and telling the principal that can you give me one month leave? I wanted to go to that industry. Can you have some contacts so that I can get that internship? Will be the desire from a teacher. As a teacher, it should be from within. Motivation, everybody will get from outside, but inspiration you will get from within. And once that inspiration will be there from the within, I think you can develop as a complete and competent teacher in that case in the future. So you, sh you should also go to the industry in that case, that will be the good teaching pharmacy practices in the future, so that coming back, you can deliver the best. Develop certain skills, come back and develop that skill in the student. That will be the industrial practices which we have to adopt. We have to call industry experts, maybe for seven days or 10 days, and demonstrate to the student with various machineries and instruments on that line that how the machines are working, how the process are working, how the GMT is implemented, taking the example of your own laboratory, how the SOPs are made, how the SOPs are validated. And all these things is practicable, only thing that you take the lead. Maybe as a assistant professor, you can take the lead. As a HOD, you can take the lead. As a head of the department, you can take the lead. Or maybe as a principal or vice principal, you can take the lead. I think one person can change the nation. One man can lead, others will follow. So that one person can be you in that case as a teacher, rather than waiting somebody to motivate you, you inspire yourself. That will be the updated knowledge and the skill, according to me, that every teacher should develop on that line. 
luckily i came from industry and joined the teaching so a lot of practices which i was knowing but again becoming the consultant and trainer i am going at par with the pharma industry at present whatever the actually skills are required it's a continuous affair which i am actually exploring today and bridging the gap between the academics as well as the industry so that will be the updated knowledge my friends that you should continuously work on and develop yourself you can make one notebook that whatever is happening today in the pharma immediately that should be in your notebook or maybe the ipad so that tomorrow the lecture you should include that topic and discuss with the student irrespective of your subject you should highlight that maybe 5 minutes that what was the yesterday's highlights in the pharma industry and the profession that will be the best part of the good teaching actually practices you can involve the student maybe select one student and ask him tomorrow 5 minutes you are going to talk on that this topic so interaction participation demonstration all this will work in a good education pharma practices in a big way and the third part according to me since we wanted to develop the leader is the personality development the soft skill development which is most important the first is the communication skill for example at present itself people are talking that russia can be the big market for india now because it is opening out because other peoples are not likely to go to russia then india can capture the russian market and if you know the russian language i think the opportunity will be tremendous for a b farm student can you promote it in your college if anybody is expert who can actually uh, actually conduct this subject or maybe the actually the language russia i think russian language plus b farm actually you will get the n number of opportunities from the pharma industry to go internationally as a leader so communication skill in your own language is important english language is important foreign language is important and i always suggest to the uh, to the teacher that at least one foreign language our student should learn it may be spanish it may be japanese it may be german whatever it is you should learn that english yes you should be master today because most of the countries are following the english and our subject is taught in the english so you should be master in the english i am from the marathi medium in that case but simultaneously i developed myself without going for the coaching and everything because of exposure because of listening because of learning continuously from the best speaker i developed my vocabulary and today people talk that i inspire the people but the day was there in my life that when i delivered my first program i was shattered i was unable to see to the participants and my actually professor told me mahesh this is not the way you should deliver the lecture you have to prepare and actually come out and then i participated in the debate competition at lm college of pharmacy which dr elidi patel knows and i stood first and that was the biggest inspiration i got that hard work actually worked and you can be the good orator you can be the good speaker irrespective of your local marathi language whatever you have even in marathi language you should become the expert that will be also useful in the field when you become a medical representative or maybe the product manager in the future so like that communication skill is important management skills are important we have the subject on that and when it comes to the management planning organizing directing delegating coordinating leading motivating these are the functional aspects of the management but organizing is most important actually last week only we felicitated from ipr the dr ashish shirsat mr ashish shirsat as the executive director of blue cross laboratories who started as a medical representative and today is the executive director and he told me that today the turnover of blue, blue cross is 850 crore from 85 crore when he joined today he has actually shifted the turnover to 850 crore and he said dr burande you have given me the opportunity during the pharmacy cup at bharti vidyapeet we were organizing the 2020 cricket tournament with industries and the colleges and he was not a cricket player but he was chosen to execute the job of organizing the pharmacy cup and he said actually the confidence in build in me by organizing that and i came to know that i am a good organizer i can talk to the people i can get the things done and that's why he has chosen sales and marketing as a career and today he is the most successful sales and marketing person right rewarded respected and today he is very much satisfied person so management skill if you promote in the student i think that will contribute in a big way so identify all these thing for the personality development in a big way do the swot analysis of the student as a teacher i think select 10 student and do their swot analysis what is the strength of that student what is the threat of that actually personality what is the opportunity for him what is the weakness in him i say area of improvement and continuously monitor right from third year that whether his strengths are built whether actually his weakness is converted to the area of improvement and what are the threats to his actually mission whatever he has said 
and what are the opportunities whatever the mission he has said you discuss that make one actually notebook you will find that one day your student will be the great entrepreneur or maybe a great marketing manager or great regulatory manager or great r and d manager and that satisfaction will be tremendous when the students are coming to you and telling that sir you have guided me i think that is the best reward or the memento or the best actually national award i can say more than a padma shri which the teacher gets so all this thing you should implement and actually these are the good educational practices according to me whatever the time you have as a teacher and then comes to the fourth part that is the skill development i nowadays i am already suggesting to many people uh, many pharmacy colleges that the bpharm degree is given by the university whether it is your state university or private university or maybe actually the centralized university or the state university they give you the bpharm but along with that bpharm whether the college can actually give you one certificate that these are the five skills which you have developed whether it is a detailing skill in marketing whether it is a counseling skill as far as the uh, pharma pharma practices are considered whether it is a validation skill if you go to the manufacturing like that almost 65 skills our institute has identified and we are developing this skill continuously with leading pharmacy colleges of india with our expert team so if you develop that four to five skill and a special certificate if you give along with that certificate and the bpharm when your student will go for the job i think immediately he will be selected so do that skill development i think sarvada vidyata vidya which what i am always saying that skill always wins if you are a skillful pharmacist i think the job of it is a tremendous career will be tremendous performance which you can give and performance will give you the reward so identify that in your area what is the subject you teach what are the skills required in your subject for the industry and actually try to develop that actually skills in the student that will be your role and for that you have to take the experience in the industry if you don't have if you are coming from industry definitely you can implement it so that will be the skill development part which you can do very confidently and when we are talking on this line i think the various program ipr is running which many people are doing that we are running almost 26 program for the skill development and during bpharm your students can do this program and many of them actually underwent our program now 10000 student pass out from our institute and today they are contributing in big way in the industry many of them even abroad now we are getting the student from abroad and enrolling because of the, the online education for the development of the skill so do that part and continuously promote such type of skill certificate program yourself you can actually contribute otherwise be associated with actually institute which we are contributing and many others are contributing on that line but at least along with the bpharm certain certificate program for the skill development student has i think that will be the best practices on that line so these are the actually four aspects and the last aspect according to me is the development of the attitude attitude to take them to the altitude i always say if you have the positive attitude i think everything can happen in the life so devly think that developing that attitude is the role of a teacher and by practice which you can do that if it is a cleanliness i think you have to see that your laboratory is clean your actually table should be clean all these things your laboratory your actually toilet should be clean what are the practices in the airport we are doing whether the same practices we, we can do in our actually toilets or not sop ask the student to prepare the standard cleaning procedure maybe for the toilet that will be useful in the industry so like that i think involve the student in that case so that more actually skills can be developed on that line and for that your attitude should be the best in that case you are asking the student to wear the apron but whether you are wearing the apron in the laboratory which is the requirement whether our students are wearing the apron in the drug store which is the actually the dress code for the pharmacy professional worldwide i think you should start working on that line then the people will follow right so you should be the role model as a teacher and that should be represented by the attitude itself whatever you do your presentation should be neat your dressing sense should be actually neat you, everything whatever you do i think that should be the perfect in that case you yourself enjoy that life as the best teacher in that case i think many students will enjoy and become the manager and some of some of them will think to become a teacher i think if you ask the student very few students i think out of 10000 student one will say that i wanted to become a teacher but you know teacher can also get the padma shri actually you know very well that harkishan singh is the only pharmacy teacher actually who received the padma shri because of his contribution to the pharmacy profession many of them are the vice chancellor our president acting president at present is a vice chancellor dr b suresh the earlier president of the vice chancellor dr kokate was the first vice chancellor in that case 
So bigger responsibilities the teacher will actually take ahead because universities are coming. It's not only the principal and director level you will actually stop. You have the sky which is opening out today in the education because of the new education policies which you have to implement. We need the leader. People say that India is lacking skill. We have only 1,000 universities, while China is having 3,000 universities, while US is having more universities than China. And that's why many universities will come. A good teacher will be required. A good teacher will be required as a vice chancellor in the future, chancellor in the future, pro chancellor in the future. These are the openings for you, my friend. And that's why if you start implementing the good educational pharma practices, I think sky is not the limit. Now, the last part which I wanted to tell you, that small, small thing you start contributing. There was a boy on the seashore and uh, he saw the starfishes coming on the seashore and they were dying. So he saw, see, he, he was seeing that uh, first time that the starfishes are dying. And that's why he started actually going to the seashore, taking one starfish and throwing into the sea. And going to the sea, again, they were getting the water and the life and their life continued. So one old person asked him, how many starfishes you can show, actually throw and give the life? He said, at least maybe 100 in a day, the 100 actually starfishes will give the life. Friends, as a teacher, small, small thing, if you start doing in your department or maybe in your actually college, that will work in a big way and that will give to the life to the pharmacy profession, that will give the energy to, you, to your pharmacy students in a big way. And at any age, you'll enjoy as a complete and capable pharmacy. So thank you very much, Dr. Dayanand Kannur, Dr. Anga Joshi, for providing this platform because I have another session to conduct here at SMBT. Thanks a lot for calling me and asking me to deliver the actually the validatory guest address. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Dr. Thank Alex, you, sir. Can I take the leave? Yes. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So uh, uh, after this, I request Dr. Suvarna Ingle, ma'am, Associate Professor and HOD PharmD and Pharmacology to propose vote of thanks. Thank you, Pallavi. Uh, <clears throat> very good afternoon to one and all. Uh, respected and most distinguished chief guest of the day, Dr. Mahesh Burande, sir. Our pillar principal ma'am, Dr. Anadha Zoshi, vice principal, Dr. Dayanand Kannu sir, and all my dear friends and colleagues. I, Suvarna Ingray, on behalf of Indira College of Pharmacy, would like to propose the vote of thanks on the occasion of this AICT sponsored online national conference on good pharmacy educational practices. At outset, I would like to thank chief guest of today's function, Dr. Mahesh Burande sir for sparing his valuable time and gracing today's function. Thank you sir for your very thought provoking, inspiring and interesting address. I extend my gratitude to all the eminent speakers for accepting our invitation and for sharing their words of wisdom with us on good pharmacy educational practices. We are all inspired by your highly knowledgeable words. Thank you all. It has been our pleasure to host all the participants of the conference. The participants were really very enthusiastic and I'm thankful to them for patient attention during conference. I would like to thank AICT for sanctioning the grant and sponsoring this conference. We wish to express our heartfelt gratitude to our beloved chairperson, Dr. Sarita Shankar Madam and group director Professor Chetan Vakalkar sir for continuous support and motivation always to conduct such events. Thank you ma'am and so an event of this dimension can't happen overnight and needs meticulous planning and execution. Though I cannot thank each one of enough for their involvement, I would like to thank all our organizing committee members and a special thanks to all our anchors for flawless anchoring. Without you guys, this event was not possible. Thank you very much. Finally, I am very thankful to Team ICP for making this event a grand success. Thank you. Thank you one and all. Thank you, ma'am. 
So here we came to the end of the function. It was a nice journey with you all for four days online conference. And I hope to see you all in future events organized at ICP in offline mode. Let's stay connected and let's grow together to reach the pinnacle of academic excellence in pharmacy. Thank you once again to all. There are a few instructions to the delegates. The feedback link is provided in the chat box. So please uh, fill the feedback. Uh, the certificate for your, uh, the certificate will be issued uh, in coming 10 to 12 days and the updates regarding that will be given on Telegram group. So please don't leave the Telegram group and check it for further instructions. Thank you once again.